The Starship Odyssey, a gleaming spearhead against the canvas of space, orbited a planet shrouded in mystery. Dr. Ava Sterling, with eyes reflecting the cosmos itself, peered out of the observation deck, her gaze fixed on the swirling maelstrom of clouds below, where electromagnetic anomalies danced like ghosts of a forgotten past. A sudden jolt tore through the ship, a violent reminder that space was no mere passive observer. Alarms blared their crimson urgency as the Odyssey was grasped by an unseen force, the planet's enigmatic pull wrenching it from its geostationary path. Report, barked Captain Harris from the command deck, his voice a calm tempest amidst the chaos. Ava, ever the eye in the storm, responded with practiced ease. We're caught in a gravitational anomaly. It's off the charts and not natural, she declared, her hands dancing across the holographic displays, her white streaked hair a stark contrast against the dim of the emergency lights. The crew, a tapestry of determination, scrambled to their stations. Among them, the ship's engineer, Luca, a man whose humor never dimmed, worked furiously to stabilize the thrusters. I'd appreciate it if we avoided becoming the next great cosmic mystery, he quipped, his hands a blur. Ava's AI companion, a voice of synthesized concern named Artemis, piped in, probability of survival is dwindling. I suggest immediate action. With the crew's efforts unified, Ava channeled her profound knowledge into deciphering the anomaly. It's a pattern, she realized. Not random, but a language. Captain, give me manual control. I can navigate us out. Trust, hard-earned and given, was granted. The Odyssey, under Ava's guidance, became an extension of her will. Each movement she commanded was a word, a sentence, a plea to the ancient forces that held them. The ship groaned, metal and spirit tested as Ava spoke the language of the anomaly. With a final, decisive command, the gravitational grip released, setting them free, leaving a trail of awe and whispers among the crew. As the Odyssey steadied, Captain Harris placed a hand on Ava's shoulder, a silent acknowledgement of her brilliance. Dr. Sterling, what was that? He asked, his eyes searching hers for the secrets she so often unveiled. Ava looked back at the now tranquil planet below, her thoughts a whirlwind. A greeting, she answered, her voice a mix of wonder and trepidation. Or perhaps a warning. The ship's systems normalized, and the crew took a collective breath, the weight of mortality acknowledged but unclaimed. Yet, as they looked upon their lead researcher, they understood that this was but the beginning. Dr. Ava Sterling had opened a dialogue with the cosmos and the story of the Odyssey was entwined with the enigma of this uncharted world. For Ava, the gravitational anomaly was more than a scientific curiosity. It was a siren's call to the depths of her soul, a piece of an interstellar puzzle that had long beckoned her. And as the stars bore witness, her journey into the heart of the unknown had just begun. The Odyssey, now in a stable orbit, hummed with a renewed sense of purpose, Dr. Ava Sterling stood at the heart of the ship's research lab, surrounded by the pulsating lights of consoles and the steady hum of machinery. Her mind raced, threading through the data streams that flowed in the aftermath of their cosmic encounter. Dr. Sterling came the ever-calm voice of Captain Harris over the comms, we need to understand our situation before we proceed. Any insights? Ava turned to the main display where a 3D model of the planet rotated slowly. The anomaly's pattern correlates with the ruins we've detected on the surface. They're emitting the same energy signature, she explained, her finger tracing the holographic glyphs that now seemed less random, more linguistic. The crew gathered around, their eyes reflecting the cryptic symbols that danced in the air. Luca, wiping the remnants of engine grease from his hands, leaned in. So, the planet speaks, and it's using gravity as its voice, he asked, a slight grin on his face despite the gravity of their situation. More than that, Ava replied, her focus sharp. It's ancient technology far beyond ours. I believe it's deliberate, intelligent. The revelation hung in the space between them, a tantalizing whisper from an extinct civilization reaching across the eons. It was then that the ship's AI, Artemis, chimed in. Incoming transmission, it announced, its voice betraying an algorithmic hint of concern. It's from the surface. The crew tensed, their anticipation a tangible shroud in the cold air of the ship. 
Ava initiated the connection, and the lab was filled with the ghostly sounds of a language no human had ever heard, a melodic sequence that resonated with the very core of the Odyssey. The transmission was brief, ending as abruptly as it began. The language was undecipherable, but its intent seemed clear, an invitation. Captain Harris, a man of action tempered with wisdom, made the call. We need to respond. Dr. Sterling, prepare to lead an away team. If there are answers, we'll find them on that planet. Ava nodded, her pulse quickening at the thought of setting foot on a world untouched by human history. We'll need to be cautious, she advised. This technology, if that's what it is, could be a boon for humanity or a Pandora's box we are not ready to open. Preparations began for the descent to the planet's surface. The away team was a mix of scientists, security personnel, and, at his insistence, Luca, who argued, you'll need someone to keep the shuttle running, and who better than me? As the hours passed and the team readied themselves, Ava retreated to her quarters. She stood before the small porthole, gazing out at the stars. Her reflection stared back at her, the white streak in her hair like a comet's tail against the darkness of space. She thought of the ancient civilization that had once thrived below, their voices now echoes in the void, reaching out for someone to hear them. And as the Odyssey's shuttle bay doors opened, revealing the planet in all its enigmatic glory, Dr. Ava Sterling stepped forward to meet the unknown, her heart a drumbeat in tune with the universe's ageless song. The shuttle bay was alive with the electric hum of preparation, the air tinged with the sharp scent of ionized fuel. Dr. Ava Sterling, clad in her fitted exosuit, checked her gear with meticulous care, each movement precise, the weight of history upon her shoulders. The away team, a cadre of expertise and courage, mirrored her actions, their faces set with resolve under the glow of the Odyssey's interior lights. Luca, his suit betraying none of the grease of his usual habitat, offered Ava a reassuring nod. Ready to make history, Doc, he asked, his voice crackling through the comms with a mix of humor and reverence. Ava returned the nod, her mind focused on the task ahead. Let's uncover some truths, she replied. The shuttle, a sleek vessel named Icarus, was the pinnacle of human engineering, designed to navigate the perils of space and the unknown challenges of alien atmospheres. As the bay doors closed, sealing the team within the craft, Captain Harris's voice echoed in their ears. Godspeed, Icarus. We'll be watching over you. With a gentle shudder, the shuttle disengaged from the Odyssey, the vastness of space enveloping it as it began its descent towards the planet. Outside the viewport, the swirling storms of the planet's atmosphere loomed large, a churning canvas of colors that defied human understanding. Ava, seated at the controls with the co-pilot beside her, steered the Icarus with a deft touch. The shuttle's shields flared as they pierced the atmosphere, the exterior buffeted by winds that howled like the chorus of the cosmos. Hold on, Ava warned, her voice steady as the shuttle shook, caught in the grip of the planet's tempestuous welcome. Beside her, the co-pilot worked the thrusters, countering the turbulent descent with bursts of calculated precision. And then, as suddenly as it had begun, the chaos ceased. The Icarus glided through a break in the clouds, revealing a landscape that took their collective breath away. Below them stretched an expanse of ruins, geometric structures that sprawled across the terrain like the bones of a civilization long dead yet whispering still. Luca whistled lowly, his face pressed against the viewport. Would you look at that? He trailed off, words failing him. The Icarus touched down with a grace that belied the momentous nature of their arrival. The landing site was a plateau overlooking the ruins, offering a panoramic view of the silent city that awaited them. As the shuttle's ramp lowered to the alien soil, a hiss of hydraulics ushered the team into a new world. The air was crisp, tinged with the scent of ozone and something unidentifiable but not entirely unwelcoming. Ava was the first to step out, her boots leaving the first human impressions on the dusty surface. The team fanned out, their instruments springing to life, scanning the structures and atmosphere for data. The ruins were magnificent, composed of a material that was neither stone nor metal but something in between, its surface etched with the same glyphs that had adorned the gravitational waves. It's like the whole city is a circuit board, the co-pilot murmured, examining a fragment with a handheld analyzer. 
Ava approached what appeared to be the central structure, a monolith that soared towards the sky, its apex lost in the clouds. The entrance was flanked by two statues, humanoid in form but with features that were fluid, almost in motion, as if they were a frozen snapshot of beings that defied the laws of physics. Her translator device, designed to decipher alien languages, hummed as it processed the glyphs. A series of chimes signaled its success, and Ava listened as the voice of a long-gone civilization filled her ears. We are the Aetherians, it began, a voice from history reaching across time. Keepers of the balance, stewards of the nexus. If you are hearing this, seeker, then we are no more. Our legacy is now in your hands. The message was a prelude to a map, a guide that illuminated the monolith's interior with a soft, guiding light. Ava signaled to the team, and together they ventured into the heart of the Aetherian legacy. Inside, the air was alive with the energy of technology that defied age. Holograms flickered to life, displaying scenes of the Aetherians, tall, ethereal beings, interacting with the very forces of the universe, bending it to their will, shaping the fabric of reality. Ava felt a connection, a resonance with the artifacts and the knowledge they contained. The phenomenon that had given her hair its premature streak of white, that had drawn her to the stars, was an echo of the power that pulsed through this lost city. As the team delved deeper, the true purpose of the monolith revealed itself. It was a library, a repository of knowledge so vast that it could hold the key to understanding not just one, but countless universes. The Odyssey had led them to a treasure trove of wisdom, a beacon of hope for a future where humanity could ascend to new heights, guardians of the balance once held by the Aetherians. And as Ava absorbed the gravity of their discovery, she knew that their journey had only just begun. For in the silence of the Aetherian ruins, a new chapter of human history was being written, a narrative of cosmic significance that would echo through the annals of time and space. The interior of the Aetherian monolith was a cathedral of light and shadow where the laws of physics seemed to bow in reverence to the knowledge it contained. Dr. Ava Sterling and her team moved through halls lined with crystalline interfaces that pulsed with the lifeblood of information, a library vast beyond any human comprehension. It's not just a repository, Ava whispered, almost afraid that speaking too loudly would disturb the sanctity of the place. It's a nexus, a central point of learning and power for the Aetherians. Luca, ever the inquisitive soul, reached out towards one of the interfaces, his hand hovering just above its surface. Do you think it's safe? He asked, turning to Ava for guidance. Her eyes, reflecting the luminescent data streams, were full of wonder. Yes, she affirmed, but let's proceed with respect and caution. This was a civilization that danced with the cosmos. As if sensing their intentions, the interface activated at Luca's touch, projecting a holographic display that surrounded the team. It showed the Aetherians, beings of light and energy, crafting worlds, weaving the very essence of matter and space-time with tools that defied imagination. Their understanding of cosmic engineering, it's incredible, murmured the co-pilot, entranced by the display. Ava nodded, her mind racing as she absorbed the scenes before her. The Aetherians had reached a level of symbiosis with the universe that humans had only begun to dream of. They were not just builders, they were artists of the celestial canvas, creators who understood that with great power came the responsibility to maintain the balance. The team pressed on, drawn deeper into the heart of the monolith by a force that felt like destiny. The central chamber awaited them, a vast, domed room where a singular structure stood, the Nexus Core. Approaching the core, Ava felt a resonance, a vibrational harmony that synced with the very core of her being. The anomaly that had drawn them here, that had spoken through gravitational waves, emanated from this point. She stepped forward, hand outstretched, and as her fingers made contact with the core, a rush of knowledge flooded through her. It was as if the Aetherians were speaking directly to her soul, imparting wisdom, warnings, and a gift. The team watched in awe as Ava became a conduit for the Aetherian legacy, her body aglow with the same energy that illuminated the monolith. The information was vast, covering millennia of cosmic history, but within the torrent of data, a message crystallized, clear and profound. The balance of the cosmos is delicate, Ava relayed, her voice steady despite the onslaught of revelations. 
The Ethereans shaped reality, but always with the understanding that every action affects the whole. They're offering us a choice. In the heart of the Ethereum nexus, surrounded by the echoes of a civilization that had once conversed with the stars, Dr. Ava Sterling stood as a bridge between the past and the potential future. The team watched in silent reverence as the luminous data streams flowed around her, a dance of light and knowledge that connected her to the very essence of the Ethereans. Their legacy, Ava spoke, her voice imbued with the weight of the knowledge she was receiving, is not just in the structures they built or the technology they left behind. It's in the understanding of our place in the cosmos, the responsibility that comes with the power to shape it. Luca, always quick to find the practical amidst the profound, interjected, so what does this mean for us? For humanity? Ava turned to face her team, the glow of the Nexus core reflected in her eyes. It means we have a choice to make. The Ethereans have given us the keys to untold power, but it's up to us to use it wisely. We could elevate our civilization, heal our planet, explore the universe. Or, she paused, the gravity of the alternative hanging heavily in the air. We could follow in the footsteps of those who might have wielded such power recklessly. The room fell silent, each member of the team grappling with the enormity of the decision before them. The Ethereans' message was clear, with great power came the need for wisdom and restraint. As they stood in contemplation, the Nexus core pulsed softly, its rhythm like the heartbeat of the universe. Ava approached the core once more, her hand hovering over its surface. We need to take this knowledge back to the Odyssey, back to Earth. We need to ensure that what we've discovered here benefits all of humanity not just a select few. The team nodded in agreement, the mission now greater than any of them had anticipated. They were no longer just explorers, they were custodians of a legacy that could shape the future of their species. The journey back to the surface was somber, each member of the team lost in thought. The Icarus awaited them, a silent sentinel against the backdrop of the alien ruins. As they boarded the shuttle, Ava took one last look at the monolith, its surface aglow with the setting of the alien suns. The descent back to the Odyssey was uneventful, but the atmosphere within the shuttle was charged with a sense of purpose. They were returning not just with data and samples, but with a decision that would define the path of their civilization. As the Odyssey came into view, a beacon of humanity's reach into the stars, Ava felt the weight of the choice they carried. The Ethereans had passed the torch to them, and now it was up to humanity to carry it forward with care, to light the way to a future where power and wisdom walked hand in hand. The Odyssey loomed before them, a silhouette against the backdrop of the cosmos, as the Icarus made its steady approach. Inside the shuttle, the atmosphere was thick with anticipation and the heavy burden of responsibility. Dr. Ava Sterling, her mind still resonating with the echoes of the Ethereum Nexus, felt the weight of the knowledge they were bringing back. As they docked, Captain Harris was the first to greet them, his expression a mixture of concern and curiosity. What did you find? He asked, his eyes scanning the faces of the returning team. Ava stepped forward, the data pad in her hand containing a mere fraction of the Ethereum legacy. We found a choice, Captain, she began, her voice steady. The Ethereans left behind more than ruins, they left a warning and an offer. The debriefing took place in the Odyssey's main conference room where Ava and her team recounted their journey into the heart of the monolith. The holographic displays brought the Ethereum nexus to life before the crew, the flowing streams of data painting a vivid picture of a civilization that had mastered the fabric of the universe. Their technology could revolutionize everything, Luca interjected, his usual levity subdued by the magnitude of their discovery. Energy, medicine, space travel, you name it. But at what cost? Ava posed the question that had been haunting her since they left the planet's surface. The Ethereans achieved wonders, but they also understood the dangers of wielding such power. They chose to be guardians, not conquerors. The room fell silent, the crew grappling with the implications. The potential for advancement was undeniable, but so was the risk of unleashing forces beyond their control. Captain Harris, ever the pragmatic leader, voiced the concern on everyone's minds. We have a duty to report this back to Earth, to the United Space Authority. But how do we ensure that this knowledge is used wisely? Ava knew the answer was not simple. 
The temptation of power, especially on a scale offered by the Aetherians, could easily lead humanity down a perilous path. We become the guardians, she suggested, the idea forming as she spoke. We establish a council, not just of scientists and leaders, but of ethicists, philosophers, voices from all corners of humanity. This decision cannot be made in a vacuum. The proposal sparked a heated debate among the crew, with opinions divided on how best to proceed. Some argued for full disclosure, trusting in humanity's capacity for self-regulation, while others echoed Ava's caution, fearing the potential for misuse. In the midst of the debate, the Odyssey's AI, Artemis, chimed in with an uncharacteristic note of urgency in its synthesized voice. Incoming transmission from Earth, it announced, the screen flickering to life to reveal the stern visage of Director Simmons of the United Space Authority. Odyssey, we've been monitoring your progress, Simmons began, his gaze piercing through the screen. Your preliminary reports have caused quite a stir. We expect a full briefing upon your return. The room tensed, the weight of the impending decisions growing heavier. Ava realized that the challenge they faced was not just about safeguarding the Aetherian legacy, but also navigating the complexities of human politics and ambition. As the transmission ended, Captain Harris turned to his crew, a determined set to his jaw. We have a duty to humanity to ensure that this gift does not become a curse. Dr. Sterling's proposal for a guardian council will be our recommendation to the authority. Ava felt a glimmer of hope amidst the uncertainty. The path ahead would be fraught with challenges, but the Odyssey's crew stood united, ready to defend the promise of a better future. The journey back to Earth would be long, but it was only the beginning of a much greater voyage for humanity. As the Odyssey set its course back to Earth, the gravity of their mission weighed heavily on the crew. Dr. Ava Sterling, now seen as the de facto guardian of the Aetherian legacy, spent her days in deep consultation with Captain Harris, Luca, and the rest of the team, outlining the framework for what would become known as the Guardian Council. The journey through the stars provided a backdrop of introspection and debate among the crew. The common room, usually a place of leisure and camaraderie, turned into a forum for discussing the ethical implications of the Aetherian technologies. Imagine the possibilities, Luke amused one evening, his eyes alight with the potential of what lay ahead. Clean energy that could power cities without harming the planet, medical advancements that could cure diseases we've deemed incurable. But at what price, countered the ship's medic, Dr. Lin. The Aetherians themselves warned of the dangers. Power on such a scale can easily corrupt, and history is rife with examples of great discoveries turned into weapons. Ava listened to her crewmates, their concerns echoing her own internal turmoil. The Aetherians had chosen her, in a way, to carry their message, and she felt the burden of ensuring their wisdom was not lost or, worse, twisted for selfish ends. As Earth grew larger in their viewport, the reality of their return set in. The United Space Authority, USA, had been in constant communication, their messages a mix of bureaucratic caution and barely concealed excitement. Director Simmons, in particular, had been insistent on debriefing Ava and her team immediately upon landing. We're not just scientists anymore, we're diplomats, peacekeepers, Captain Harris remarked during one of their strategy sessions. Our words and actions in the coming days will set the tone for how humanity proceeds. The Odyssey's AI, Artemis, updated the crew on the growing public interest in their mission. News outlets had caught wind of a significant discovery and speculation ran rampant. The crew prepared for a barrage of attention, both welcome and otherwise. Ava spent the final days of their journey compiling the data, the recordings, and her personal observations into a cohesive presentation. She aimed to convey not just the facts of their discovery, but the emotional journey, the awe of standing within the Aetherian Nexus, the profound sense of responsibility the ancient civilization had imparted upon them. As Earth's blue hue filled the sky, the Odyssey passed through the atmosphere, a fiery herald of change. The landing was smooth, a testament to the skill of the crew and the ship that had carried them across the stars. The crew was greeted with a mixture of military precision and scientific fervor as they disembarked. 
Director Simmons was there in person, his demeanor a mix of official formality and barely restrained curiosity. Welcome back, Odyssey, he greeted, his eyes locking onto Ava. We are eager to hear of your findings. Ava nodded, her data pad clutched tightly in her hand. The next steps were clear, but the path was fraught with uncertainty. As she followed Simmons and the welcoming committee into the heart of the USA's headquarters, she knew that the true journey was just beginning. The world awaited the revelations of the Odyssey, and Ava Sterling, guardian of the Aetherian legacy, was ready to lead the way. The Grand Conference Room at the United Space Authority's headquarters was filled to capacity, a sea of faces from every corner of the globe representing the pinnacle of Earth's scientific, political, and ethical spheres. The air was thick with anticipation, the collective breath of humanity waiting to hear the tale of the Odyssey and the secrets it unearthed among the stars. At the podium stood Dr. Ava Sterling, her posture commanding despite the weight of the world on her shoulders. Beside her, Captain Harris, Luca, and key members of the Odyssey's crew formed a united front, their expressions a blend of resolve and solemnity. Director Simmons introduced Ava with a brief nod, his usual bureaucratic veneer giving way to genuine respect. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Ava Sterling. The room fell silent as Ava began to speak, her voice clear and resonant. She recounted their journey, the discovery of the Aetherian planet, the gravitational anomaly, and the descent into the heart of an ancient civilization that had mastered the cosmos in ways humanity could only dream of. With each word, the holographic displays came to life, showcasing the alien ruins, the Nexus core, and the streams of data that had flowed through Ava as she connected with the Aetherian legacy. Murmurs of awe and disbelief rippled through the audience, a testament to the profound impact of her words. But with great power comes great responsibility, Ava continued, echoing the warning the Aetherians had left behind. The knowledge and technology we've encountered could transform our world, heal our planet, and propel us into a new era of exploration and understanding. However, if misused, it could also lead us down a path of destruction and despair. She proposed the formation of the Guardian Council, a body that would not only oversee the research and application of Aetherian technologies, but also ensure that ethical considerations were at the forefront of humanity's new journey. This council will include scientists, ethicists, philosophers, and representatives from all sectors of society. It will be transparent, inclusive, and guided by the principle of doing no harm. The room erupted in a cacophony of voices, questions flying from every direction. Some hailed Ava's vision as the dawn of a new enlightenment for humanity, while others voiced concerns about the feasibility of such oversight and the potential for power struggles. Director Simmons called for order, his gaze sweeping over the assembly. We stand at the threshold of a new frontier, he declared, his voice imbued with the gravity of the moment. The path we choose today will define the future of our species. Let us proceed with caution, wisdom, and a shared commitment to the betterment of all. As the assembly engaged in fervent discussion, Ava stepped down from the podium, her message delivered, her plea for a thoughtful stewardship of the Aetherian legacy laid bare. The debate that ensued was just the beginning of a global dialogue, one that would shape the policies, projects, and protections surrounding the extraterrestrial technologies. In the days that followed, the Guardian Council took shape, a beacon of hope and a testament to Ava's resolve to honor the Aetherians' wish for balance and harmony. The road ahead was fraught with challenges, but under Ava's guidance, humanity embarked on a new era of cosmic stewardship forever changed by the Odyssey's journey and the ancient voices that had whispered to them among the stars. In the weeks that followed the historic assembly, the establishment of the Guardian Council became the focal point of a global effort to navigate the new frontier opened by the Odyssey's mission. Dr. Ava Sterling, now widely regarded as the torchbearer of the Aetherian legacy, found herself at the helm of an unprecedented collaborative endeavor. The Guardian Council's inaugural meeting was held at the United Nations, symbolizing its universal jurisdiction and humanity's collective guardianship over the Aetherian technologies. 
representatives from diverse fields and nations gathered, each bringing their own perspectives and expertise to the table united by a common goal, to ensure the responsible integration of extraterrestrial knowledge into human society. Ava opened the session with a speech that resonated with the weight of history and the promise of the future. We are here not just as representatives of our respective fields or countries, but as custodians of a gift that transcends our current understanding, she stated, her voice imbued with the gravity of their task. Our actions here will lay the foundation for a future where technology serves humanity and our planet, preserving the balance that the Ethereans so wisely upheld. The Council's discussions ranged from the technical to the philosophical, tackling complex issues such as the distribution of technology, safeguarding against misuse, and ensuring that the benefits extended to all of humanity, not just the privileged few. Luca, representing the technical team from the Odyssey, shared insights into the potential applications of Ethereum technology from energy generation to medical advancements, while emphasizing the need for stringent safeguards. Ethicists and philosophers debated the moral implications of such power, drawing on the Ethereum principle of harmony and balance. Environmentalists highlighted the opportunity to reverse ecological damage on Earth, using Ethereum-inspired technologies to restore natural habitats and cleanse the oceans. As the Council delved into the intricacies of policy and governance, Ava found herself reflecting on the Ethereum message, its relevance echoing in every decision they made. The Council agreed on a set of guiding principles inspired by the Ethereum ethos, which would underpin all future projects, sustainability, equity, and a reverence for the interconnectedness of all life. The meeting concluded with a unanimous commitment to transparency and inclusivity, ensuring that the progress made with Ethereum technologies would be communicated openly with the global population, fostering a culture of trust and cooperation. In the days that followed, the Guardian Council's resolutions were met with a mix of optimism and skepticism by the public and the media. Yet, the overwhelming sentiment was one of hope, a collective aspiration for a new era marked by unity and the responsible stewardship of the planet and its resources. Ava, standing at the window of the Council's newly established headquarters, gazed out at the bustling city below, a tangible representation of humanity's potential. She realized that the true legacy of the Ethereans was not in the relics of their technology, but in the spirit of their wisdom, urging humanity to look beyond the stars and within themselves to find the harmony that binds the universe together. The journey that began with the Odyssey's voyage had led to a pivotal moment in human history where the choices made would weave the fabric of harmony into the very essence of civilization, guiding humanity towards a future where technology and wisdom walked hand in hand. Months had passed since the Guardian Council's formation and the world had watched as the seeds sown by Dr. Ava Sterling began to sprout into tangible change. The integration of Ethereum principles into human technology and society was unfolding like the dawn of a new age, marked by a global renaissance of innovation, sustainability, and unity. Ava stood at the podium in a vast auditorium filled with the brightest minds from around the globe gathered for the first annual Harmony Summit, an event inspired by the Ethereum ethos and dedicated to showcasing the advancements and projects born from the Council's guidance. The air buzzed with anticipation, a collective eagerness to witness the unveiling of a future once dreamt of in the realms of science fiction. As we stand on the cusp of a new horizon, Ava began, her voice resonant and clear, we are reminded of the responsibility that accompanies our journey into the unknown. The Ethereum legacy has not only provided us with the tools to reshape our world, but has also illuminated the path towards a more harmonious existence. She spoke of the groundbreaking initiatives already underway, deserts blooming with life through terraforming technologies, diseases once deemed incurable now on the brink of eradication, and clean, boundless energy flowing into the veins of cities, revitalizing them without the shadow of environmental degradation. Luca, ever the charismatic innovator, took to the stage to demonstrate a compact Ethereum-inspired reactor, a marvel that promised an end to the energy crises plaguing many parts of the world. 
This is just the beginning, he declared, his enthusiasm infectious, a glimpse into a future where power is no longer a commodity, but a shared resource for the betterment of all. The summit was not just a showcase of technological wonders, but a forum for dialogue on the ethical implications and responsibilities that came with such power. Panels of philosophers, ethicists, and scientists engaged in spirited discussions, their debates broadcasted worldwide, inviting people from all walks of life to partake in the conversation. In a quieter moment, away from the limelight, Ava found herself in a garden on the summit grounds, a serene space designed to embody the Aetherian principle of balance. Here, amidst the harmony of nature and technology, she reflected on the journey that had brought humanity to this precipice of change. The path ahead was still fraught with challenges and uncertainties. Yet, the unity and shared purpose that had emerged from the collective embrace of the Aetherian wisdom offered a beacon of hope. Humanity stood at the threshold of a new era, one where the exploration of the cosmos and the stewardship of Earth went hand in hand, guided by the principles of balance, respect, and an unwavering commitment to the greater good. As the sun set, casting a golden glow over the garden, Ava felt a profound connection to the countless generations that would follow, each stepping forward into the future they were now shaping with careful hands. The Odyssey's mission had been the catalyst, but it was the collective will of humanity, inspired by the echoes of an ancient civilization, that would carve the path forward. The Aetherian legacy, once a whisper among the stars, now resonated through the heart of human civilization, a reminder that in the vast, intricate tapestry of the universe, harmony was not just a concept, but the very foundation of all existence. And as the stars twinkled above, mirroring the lights of the summit below, Ava Sterling knew that the true journey, humanity's odyssey into the future, was just beginning.